Welcome to Chapter 4 of the Middle Illini Cruise Planning class. In this chapter, we're going to cover anchoring and mooring ball pickup. In this chapter, we're going to look at various anchors, how to set them, and then also look at handling mooring balls, which will be similar to what we deal with in the British Virgin Islands. When we're looking for choosing an anchor, there are several factors that we need to consider. What we're really looking for is the surface area that's going to dig into the sand and not necessarily how much it weighs. The weather conditions of the area also matter. We need to look at the, the direction of the wind and the topography of the area around us. We also need to consider where the tides and the currents are coming to see how, we're, how, we, how we might hang on our anchor as, it, as we float around it. There's also we need to look at the bottom conditions that we're going to be dealing with. Is it going to be a mud or sand like Clinton Lake, or is it going to be rock like in the um, Great Lakes, or perhaps grass like down in the Caribbean? We should also consider how many anchors we need. We need to have two anchors, one that we primarily use and then one for a backup. Some boats might have a smaller one being their lunch hook, and the others would, would be uh, two set up for different types of bottoms. There are two factors that we need to consider when looking at anchors. One is set and the other is hold. A set is how it actually digs into the bottom of the seabed and it sort of will it stay hooked as the boat drifts around. And that's sort of a function of how far the flukes dig into the bottom of the sand. So that's a surface area type thing. Hold is how hard is it going to be able to remove the anchor once we're getting ready to pull it out. The anchor weight is one of the features that you know typically measure what size do we need for the boat. And generally what we're looking for here is when, when, a, when you look it up on the chart based upon the weight of your boat and says, okay, I need a 30 pound anchor. Generally what we might, we recommend is actually going for an anchor that's the next size larger than the one recommended. On my Capri, there's nothing that's oversized on my boat other than my anchor, which is one of the things that I did size up to, uh, to hold whenever I needed to use it. Some boat factors to consider when we're setting our anchor up or choosing the anchor for the day are things like the conditions that might affect the load. These could be the wind, the current, wave action, scope, uh, the energy absorption and the shear forces that cause a strain. Some of these things can be increased by the windage of the boat, how strong is, how much area above the water that the wind's going to be blow on, the weight of the boat, how deep is the boat, the boat design and the keel design are all factors that come into play in choosing an anchor. There are also different anchors for different situations, such as different bottom types. Anchors work better in some types of bottom than others. If it's sand and mud or clay, a Danforth works very well. If it's rock, then you might use a bruise anchor. If it's weed, you'll probably consider a, a, a plow anchor. Another factor is we need to consider is if the boat, the wind shifts in the middle of the night and the boat r rotates around the anchor, will it help reset when, when the conditions change? The final factor that we're considering about an anchor is how easy is it to retrieve it? To, so what we'll do is we'll pull it ahead drive the boat ahead a little bit and then take the line in as we're moving the boat forward and then raise it up. If the anchor sticks, we just cleat the line down and then let the motion of the boat on, on the waves break the anchor loose. You don't want to overstrain the anchor windlass because that's a very important part when you're dealing with a lot of weight from an anchor. Some other things to think about when you're putting down an anchor is Who's the person up in the bow? Do they do they, do they know what they're doing? Uh, my first experience with anchoring, we I was a sailor but not a not a cruiser, so we were putting the boat in, and we tried dropping the anchor down, and all of a sudden things were not going exactly as expected. The the anchor chain had jumped off the windlass, and the whole chain had then started running out wide, uh, free form, deep deep deep. 
And so we were not able to control it. And I was looking back in the back of the boat saying, what the heck's going on up there? I knew my, my crew was capable, but we had a situation that was beyond our current experience. We also need to look at the connections on our, on our anchor road and all the other things. Uh, for example, we want to make sure that there aren't any loose clevis pins or things like that that might come loose in an oppor inopportune time. Last year, one of the boats in our flotilla, the clevis pin came out of the chain and it was actually just barely hanging on to in place. And so we would not have wanted to ha anchor that and, and count on that for our nights overnight. Finally, we need to also consider some of the uh, other factors that are there, such as what kind of bottom type do we have? If there's coral, uh, that's very fragile. You know, the anchor chain itself can withstand the, the abrasion in a coral area, but anchoring in a coral area is illegal. For example, if you anchor in fleas and damage the coral, it's it's like a thousand dollars an inch of damage fine to the to the boater. So you want to be really careful and and, and not anchor in a coral area. When we store our anchor, we're, you know, the boats have, you know, places for them to be safely put so that they don't can hook up on the lines as they go, you know, out as we're out sailing. Power boats, they, they put those under the deck, but on a sailboat, they're generally, you know, attached to a connection that holds the anchor in place so that as we're bouncing around, it doesn't come off the deck and bang into the boat and do damage to the gel coat and things like that. We want them to be ready for use in case we have, you know, something happens and we need to quickly get them down and hold us in place. But we also need to have them hooked down so that they don't break free in, a, in, in heavy seas. This concludes part one of our chapter four, anchoring and mooring balls. Please join us on to part two on the next video.